Roy Williams was one of the most vicious hitters in NFL history. A nice guy off the field, but on the field a terror on the back end. North standings. Oh, a huge hit played by Roy Williams on high streaks. That was one of those hollow thuds that comes all the way up here in the booth. I don't think all the lights are on right now in that house. What day is it, Ty? Do you know what city you're in? In this video, I'm going to revisit some of the biggest hits in his career and reveal some of the stories that surrounded him. So strap up, this is going to be a good one. In week two of the 2003 season, Dallas and the Giants met up in a crazy thriller. Because Bill Parcells comes in and just his appearance, just Bill Parcells there is going to make him better. He doesn't have all his guys. He'll get more in the second year, more in the third year, then we'll see. Things got interesting when Dallas jumped offside on the third down. Last pass anyway. Oops, oops. Since it was a free play, Collins thought he could pull off a sneaky throw across the middle of the field. Usually, defenses are caught off guard in these situations, but Dallas in the early 2000s had a no-fly zone, and Roy Williams was the patrol. Amani catches the pass, and boy, did Roy deliver a brutal hit on Amani as he crossed the field. Toomer makes the catch, and then Williams knocks him down. After the game, the Giants fans called Roy Williams a dirty player. If the fans thought that hit was bad, they had no idea what was coming next. Some weeks later, Dallas and the Giants met up for a game that decided the fates of the Dallas Cowboys playoff picture in Week 16. The Giants were on edge this game, having the opportunity to avenge the loss early in the season and to put the Cowboys out of playoff hopes against Bill Parcells. This made the game one of the most intense games in their historic rivalry. In the middle of the game, Wide receiver Armani Toomer catches a pass and Roy Williams tackles him. When Roy stood up, he kind of leaned on Armani and Armani got mad and pushed him. But Armani, you gotta be careful who you push, especially when it comes to a maniac like Roy Williams. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Why are you pushing me? Like, you know, and I told him, I said, dude, I'm gonna F you up. And literally, probably a couple of plays later, I had an opportunity. Uh, Tumor was against Newman on the sideline. I think I was either half safety or third. And I ran over there and I was like, all I seen was a green light. I don't even care. I was like, I'm, I told him I was going to get him. I need to be a man of my word. And Giants quarterback rolls out, throws the ball to Monty Tumor, and Monty gets his feet down, and Roy comes from about 10 feet away. He just explodes through a line. I saw Armani on the ground, I knew he was done. He was done done. I, I just remember the impact and the sound of it. Put him down for a little bit. I don't know if he came back in the game after that. Before the week of the Pro Bowl, Darren Woodson went to Roy and just about begged him to take it easy with the hitch during the game. But Roy was on the center stage. The world was watching. You might be able to train a lion, but you would never be able to tame him. I don't think there was an on and off switch for him. It was just on. And even if it was in the Pro Bowl, and I remember, you know, being him being in the Pro Bowl, and before he left, I said, hey, man, chill out a little bit, take it easy. He was like, oh, I'll be fine. I was trying to take advice from Woody, which I probably forgot in the months of the festivities of being around the league's top players. Um, <laughs> and Manning to throw. And it's in. Like that. I was literally trying to not not hurt him because it really could have been bad because I could have easily, I could have taken off his head. In week five of the 2003 season, an old legend came back to visit Texas Stadium. The most memorable game for him, at, and a lot of people have asked me that, is a game that goes back to Giants Stadium. When he played with a broken oh, shoulder, they... nobody thought he could continue and he did. And, it was just uh, one of the most courageous performances I ever saw. There were some rumors in Texas that Smith and Jones didn't leave on good terms. Smith was still friends with a lot of the players there. On the other hand, Roy was out hunting like normal. Wait, with time. Brian Johnson caught it, was hit, the ball came out, and it's incomplete. On Smith's sixth carry of the game, Williams came through like a missile and hit Smith so hard that you could hear it in the bleachers. Second down. Emmett Smith. Hit hard right at the line of scrimmage. Roy Williams bringing the wood and Emmett knows that he's back. 
I'll tell you, he comes right from the corner of the screen. Smith left the game because of a broken shoulder blade. How ironic it is that on the day he comes back to Texas Stadium, yeah. your biggest memory is about a shoulder injury, and he leaves with a shoulder injury right now. I hope it's not as serious as that one was because he showed incredible courage at that. It was one of the saddest moments watching football in my entire life. Pro Bowl receiver Lavernius Coles tore through the league in 2003, catching 1,200 yards and six touchdowns. But the Redskins was an abysmal 5-11. The next season, the Redskins made historic moves in the offseason. The nation's capital had a glimmer of hope as an old legend returned to the sidelines. Now Gibbs is returning to his roots. It's official. He's back as the coach of the Redskins. The Redskins signed the Jacksonville Jaguars legend quarterback Mark Brunel and was involved in one of the hottest trade deals of that year. The final piece of this deal came into place Tuesday night, that being Bailey's new seven-year, $63 million deal with Coles season was set to be another breakout one, although the Redskins lost to another divisional rival, the Giants, the week before, making this game an important matchup. Coles had 100 yards versus the Giants in the loss. In order for Dallas to win, they had to assert dominance over the middle of the field and stop one of the best receivers in the league. Excitement abounds. Drama ready to unfold. Nostalgia in the air. That was Roy Williams' job and his job alone. Roy started the game in hunting mode. It was third and 10 in the first quarter. Coles ran over the middle in what looked like a deep post in Roy's territory. Coles on the other side, third down and 10. Here comes the blitz, Brunel gets it away and it is dropped by Coles again. So two drops on Bulls between the eight and zero. Hit by Roy Williams, pays the price at the end. Two of those. Yeah, it's not Brunel's fault. I mean, he threw two perfect passes to Lavernius Coles. And you can't say that, you know, that he has short arms here. He doesn't. He knows where Roy Williams is in there. You're going to get hit anyway, so you might as well catch the ball. He has shortness of breath right now, though. That was one of the most brutal hits that I've ever seen on a Monday night game. Roy hit Cole so hard that he left him on the ground in pain with a concussion. After that hit, the Redskins receivers were absolutely terrified to go over the middle. Roy did his job and Dallas spoiled Joe Gibbs' Monday night party. In 2004, Terrell Owens was with the Philadelphia Eagles. Dallas and the Eagles met up in week 10. Dallas got embarrassed on Monday night football in front of the entire country. On one play, McNabb ran for literally 14 yards before throwing a 60-yard bomb to Freddie Mitchell. Coming back this way, has a lot of room, is gonna launch one, he was behind the line of script. But Owens was the story of the night. He destroyed Dallas catching three touchdowns for 143 yards. And that pass is caught by Owens. It was a low throw. He breaks away. He's inside the 10, and he will score. After each touchdown, Owens made Dallas pay even more with his celebrations. And that rating will go up a couple of notches. Instead, he drops straight back, throws into the end zone. But it was this celebration that marked Owens and the entire Eagles offense as a target. Play fake to the end zone goes McNabb. And how in the world does Owens get that open? Fast forward to week 15. Dallas' defense was on a tear in this game and had a mindset of revenge. to Terrell Owens and the ball knocked away in Owens' hands. And of course, you know, the Eagles want to take advantage of what has been subpar play by the Dallas corners. They Roy Williams was everywhere. And McNabb gets hit, flag is down, and the pass is intercepted by Roy Williams. Prior to the pass, illegal contact, 59, defense. Donovan McNabb up the middle and overthrows. So McNabb has not been very accurate to start the game. They hold here, fourth down coming up, kick, and McNabb's pass, and it's dropped by Freddie Mitchell. That's what number 31 does, lurking in the secondary. Looks like Mitchell had his hands on it. Owens in the Eagles passing game was shut down in the first two quarters. It was an entirely different game from earlier in the season. Just after halftime, Owens caught a short pass and tried to take it up the field when one of the most controversial tackles in NFL history took place. They called again Dallas, resulting in a first down for the Eagles, and here is McNabb drilling it and by Terrell Owens. His second catch of the day, and this one for a substantial yardage, 20 yards and a first down into Dallas territory. Williams covering it. Now he's... Oh boy. Now he's slowly getting up. 
I personally don't think that Roy tried to hurt Owens on purpose on this play. Roy was just extra aggressive in this game. He was out for blood, but within the confinements of the game. Keep in mind, Owens led the league in yards after the catch that season. He destroyed Dallas in week two in yards after catch. So Roy was not about to let him break away for another huge game. He grabbed his collar and dragged him down. Unfortunately, Owens broke his leg in the process. Now, not everyone felt like I did. Because of this tackle, Roy was called a dirty player all over the league. Keep in mind, what Roy did was not against the rules. If you remember, it was the 49ers who stopped Drew Pearson from scoring in 1981 on what we know today as the horse collar play. White down the middle, caught by Pearson, and Wright had him by the shirt or he's gone. Had that rule been in place then, Dallas probably would have won that game. But the next season in 2005, the league made a change in the rule and made the horse collar tackle illegal. In fact, they called it the Roy Williams rule. Roy had so many vicious hits over the course of his career, but to me, these ones are his most hunting tackles. Until next time, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.